Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. You join me today at my paint station because I am tinkering with some Aeronautica Imperialis miniatures. I am here trying to figure out a good way to easily identify the miniatures on the board because um, they're, when you've got ships of the same type, when you've got aircraft of the same type, they look very similar even if they have different weapons and you're referencing cards that you have off to the side of the board and even when I paint them, they're probably all going to look very similar. So what I was just playing with was um, these, you de they're designed so you don't have to actually attach them to the bases, by the way, which is quite cool. And you can do that. And then, this is one of the things I like about it, once they're, once they're on there, you can kind of position them however you want. Banking and things like that, it's very cool. But yeah, what I'm, what I'm doing is, um, I've just applied a transfer here on the base at the point, the, the, the forward facing edge of the base. And I've applied a matching transfer up on here on this card. And that's the idea that I'm tinkering with at the moment is that um, there will be a, a, a numbered card for a numbered base. You put the base on the relevant craft and then it's just an extra identifier. Uh, in, in addition to any painting I do, uh, because most of the ships will look the same. There are some named ships that have different paint schemes, which I will hash up in an attempt to recreate, I expect. But anyway, so while I was here tinkering with this idea, I thought it was an opportunity to show you the assembled Aeronautica Imperialis ships, which I'm sure you have seen by now numerous times, but I thought I could also talk about what I do and do not like about them. Obviously, what I do initially like about them is that they look awesome. They really are nice, and um, I mentioned this in another video, but these are the Marauder Bombers, and they're massive. They're really big. Much bigger than I was expecting. But they were also not a lot of fun to put together. There are some things about these kits that I am not that keen on. I do like the fact that you can arrange them on the base however you want, though. So you can have them taking off or, or crashing in this case. But yeah, let's put the base to one side for one moment. So yeah, this is the Marauder Bomber. One of the easier ones to put together, I, I think. Um, they were all relatively similar. I think the Dacker Jets were the easiest to go together. The uh, the Fighters, the uh, Furies, I think they're called. What are they called? Thunderbolt Furies were the hardest ones to go together um, because of the size of the components. But yeah, the um, the instructions you get with the Aeronautica Imperialis stuff, it, it, they're not great. Um, it's really odd. This is the uh, the instructions for the Marauder, and they really feel like a bit of a step backwards. Uh, the they're just not quite as clear as as previous Games Workshop kits have been. I mean, this this diagram here, you've got a very fiddly bit that's got to go in to this piece here in a very specific orientation to get this um, look on the other side. It sort of pops through a hole and comes out the other side looking like that. But it's a little bit fiddly. You'll probably put that piece in four or five times incorrectly before you get the orientation right. Um, and, and also, there's, there's, they haven't indicated where glue goes, where are the best places to, to put a drop of glue, things like that. It's not massive, it's, it's not, you know, they're, they're still clear enough in, in a lot of regards. But, the, the, the previous miniatures that I assembled were actually the uh, Escalation miniatures from Blackstone Fortress. And yes, these are push fit miniatures. They are designed to be easier to go together. But when you look at the assembly instructions for these guys, they've got these little box outs that show you the correct sequence to do the sub assemblies. They use color coding to show you which bits have already been assembled. And these miniatures don't actually require glue, so it doesn't show it. But um, on other kits that do require glue, they actually highlight in yellow the best place to put the glue. So I don't know why they've gone away from that format here in order to go back to something that looks like a kit from a few years past. And this definitely looks like an older kit. But hey, I don't know if that's that's the involvement of Forge World, maybe. I don't know, maybe this is what all Forge World kits look like. It's a bit of an inconvenience. It's not the end of the world. But it definitely made it a little bit trickier than than it could have been. But, I mean, with some fiddly bits and pieces and some small 
part, eventually you will get a very cool looking ship. Uh, aircraft, I should say. I keep calling them ships. When you assemble these, they come on two frames. And the two frames will build you two marauders. You get one large frame and you will use every component off of that frame and then you get one small frame which has some duplicate bits from from the other frame and some other bits and you will use everything there's nothing wasted on those frames I don't know why they didn't make the second frame so it had the other options to make uh, the other type of bomber that you can get which they're, they're quite similar they have a different rear end uh, but I feel like they could have done the alternative build on just the two frames but they haven't done that the other thing is they have not included enough of these rockets and bombs to be able to do um, every combination that you can imagine you actually only get um, eight bombs and eight rockets so you uh you can't do WYSIWYG if you want all of your bombers to have just bombs if you wanted to give give this guy eight bombs and the other model on the kit you also wanted to give eight bombs you can't do it you see um, I had to do do that however these bits are so small and when the uh, the craft are on the playing field I'm not sure you're gonna be able to easily identify which craft has which weapons so I think you can probably just get away with making them look the way you want them to look. Um, also, as well, if you're playing a campaign, you probably won't have all of these weapons to start with and you might build them up over time. So again, unless you want to faff about gluing, gluing on missiles and then taking them off and things like that, it's not really worth the effort. So I think you can get away with just sticking on whatever you want to stick on on the bottom. But it is a little bit of, of a shame they didn't have enough uh, to do uh, more of each or, or different combinations of each as you wanted to But those are the marauders next. Let's take a look at my favorite craft in the set the Wah Daka jets you get three of these on a frame and They're probably um, the best looking craft, but also the cleverest kit um, You will not have a lot of leftover components on the frame you will have a few rockets or bombs probably I have rockets because I didn't like these super tiny rockets so I didn't use them but when you assemble these um, each frame will make three different nose cones three different wing assemblies three different tails and there are three different uh, exhaust pipes to go on the back and you can combine those in any combination. So you get a lot of different variation there. Um, there's also uh, three different sets of pipes that come out the sides, um, which you can use on any of the craft. So there's lots of different ways to make different looking ships without having a lot of fiddly little bits to stick on. It's not like they've given you one frame and then you can add bits onto it. It's a mix and match of nose, wings, tail, exhaust, kind of like those um those children's books you can get where you have the flaps and you can change the flaps to make different crazy animals. And it's a really clever way to make these, and they do look very cool. Um, it has the same problem with the the under underslung weaponry, in that you don't get enough to be able to make them all the same. For example, if you want all of your uh, Daka jets to have the bombs there aren't enough bombs you have to do a combination of bombs and rockets on at least some of them but again because it's so small and when they're on the table and you know if you've got them angled down or whatever um, you probably can't tell anyway so again I'm not worried about WYSIWYG and I do wonder how many other people will be uh, I just picked all the biggest weaponry that I could because I wanted um, big chunky rockets and bombs under slung on the on the wings so that is what i did and i sort of left off the spindly little rockets which i didn't think looked as cool i thought for uh daca jets having the biggest bombs and rockets possible was the way to go so that is what i did overall definitely my favorite they are the smallest craft by far um, but they have the most character they're really interesting 
Next up we have the Thunderbolt Fighters. Uh, these were my least favourite to put together. They were fiddly, they had some incredibly small parts and um, you can make two different variations. You can make a Thunderbolt Fighter and a Thunderbolt Fury. I made one of each um, and when they are on the table it's I don't think there's enough to distinguish them. I mean, obviously, again, you can paint them differently, uh, which will help a lot. But in terms of the actual design, the, the main craft is exactly the same. The only difference is right up here, you can see that the fighter has these twin linked guns here, whereas the Furies have the Gatling cannon thingies. I can't remember what they're called. But that is the only difference, the the uh, the weapons at the front. Everything else is exactly the same. And there were some very, very small parts on these. If I show you the rear, you can see just here on the, uh, on the twin exhaust, those components there, the little rings at the end, are separate items that just sit inside recesses on the... The main engine pipes so you've got to put a drop of glue on there and then you've got to very carefully drop that on and try and position it and there's nothing to to lock it into a position into a certain position or shape it just sort of slops around and they're very thin and very small and it is you know like trying to assemble things on the head of a pin somewhat so i didn't enjoy that bit at all um other than that, not a lot to say really. Uh, you get quite a few weapon options. You will have weapon options left over on these. Um, you can see that on this frame here, I have extra bombs and extra rockets left over. There was enough to do pretty much whatever combination I wanted. Um, and also because I built one Fury and one Fighter, I have left over on the frame some other weapon options because they each frame will do two and you can do them both as furies or both as fighters so either way you're going to have some weapons left over there's not a lot else to say about them really they had some fiddly moments uh, assembling the nose cones is quite a fiddle this is what happened what you do with the thunderbolt fighter with the furies you have these extra extra parts this again was a very tiny part and it's got this little exclamation mark here that says assemble first so against this part this part doesn't actually need assembly um what they mean is assemble that part to that part before putting the two sides on um but the numbering's not sequential it goes it goes 10 11 12 13 but 13 has to go to 11 first things like that which just strike me as being out of character for the assembly instructions of a games workshop kit and again i'm not saying it's completely baffling and you're going to be completely confused but what i'm saying is that new new kits normally the numbering is sequential there's little box outs if you have to assemble something first this would be in a little box out saying this bit goes to this bit then these two bits go on the side and it would just be a little bit clearer this just feels a little bit messy and uh, those are those uh, those uh, exhausts that I was talking about you see how they just sit on it's not it's not a fun thing to have to assemble and I just didn't, I just didn't enjoy assembling these I enjoy the finished products very much I think they look absolutely beautiful they really are they've uh, games workshop has excelled in the design of these I think they are amazing I love the fact that the uh, the Imperial craft are very utilitarian. They're very square and blocky. They're get the job done craft. It looks like they've been, you know, hammered together as quickly and effect and effectively as possible for as little cost as possible to get as many up in the air as soon as possible and relying on just solid construction and getting things done. A uh, very utilitarian design compared to the orc craft which really do feel like they have been slapped together it's really nice and it it does make a nice contrast between the two forces but anyway that's almost all of them we have left just some fighter bombers um. so here's a fighter bomber again a very cool miniature i love the uh, the openings on the front it just looks like they're smiling 
Wow. Awesome. Um, I gave this one lots of big bombs. Because I thought it would be funny. Um, and also, I gave it some custom big shooters. And the other one, I also gave custom big shooters. Just because, you know, put more guns on stuff if you can. Um, but he's just got um, a set of rockets and a set of small bombs. And the reason being, again, because the kit did not include enough big bombs. But yes, very cool. Went together very nicely. Um, there's one moment in the kit where um, I nearly made a mistake because I assembled this one first. It's Jack and Ori time. I'll tell you a story. I'll get the instructions out and I'll show you. So... Here's the bomber instructions. Now, the kit sort of shows you how to assemble one of the bombers and then just shows you the, com the, the variant part that you can use instead. Um, so, if you've got nine and seven and one, you put those together and you make one body. However, you can replace nine with ten and you can replace seven with eight and you can replace one with two and you will get a different assembly which looks different it's a good way of doing it a good way of getting that variation however it only shows you how to assemble nine seven and one now obviously ten eight and two will go together the same way but it caused a minor problem over here because we put the wings on and you can see that these wings bend down so i assembled one craft like this, this guy here, very nice. And then when I came to assemble the second set, I was kind of following the diagram, but obviously I've only got these wings left. These wings also bend, so I was looking at the diagram and I stuck them on. And then I went to the back page to, to uh, attach the underslung weaponry. And I realized that I had stuck the wings on upside down because on this craft, the bend goes upwards and all of the connection points for weaponry are on that side. So I had to very quickly um, disassemble the wings and stick them back on the other way up. And it's that sort of thing again. You know, I've been building miniatures for over 30 years. And so I, I don't tend to make a lot of mistakes. But um, I obviously wasn't 100% paying attention to which way up these went. And it obviously doesn't show you in the diagrams here which way up they go. And that's an oversight for me. It's something that people who are newer to miniatures assembly may not even notice and may not pick up on. So um, that is something that I think should be addressed. But yes, you can see here on the back, they have all the options for big bombs, wing bombs, rockets, and custom big shooters. But you can see there's only four big bombs. Uh, and there's six wing bombs and then there's four rockets. So there's not enough... Uh, to do all the different combinations you might want, but there's a, a range. The custom big shooters, it doesn't actually show you on any diagram where they go. Now, they're obviously underslung, and they go under the wings somewhere, but this is just one of those things that bugged me a little bit, because I didn't know whether to put them on the outside edge of the wings or the inside edge of the wings, and I know it doesn't really matter, uh, but it would have been nice, uh, not only to show where they go, but also which way round they go, because um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this on camera, but we'll see if we can get it, get it to show. Um, the custom shooters have these, uh, I assume they're like ammo canisters coming out the sides, and I spent a little while trying to figure out whether those ammo canisters should face inwards towards the body or outwards towards the wing. And again, it doesn't really matter, but it's the kind of thing that you know, did I did I do right by putting them to closer towards the body? I do not know anything about real life um, aircraft and military vehicles, so I wasn't sure whether um, under normal uses you would want your your weaponry a little bit further out on the wing. I assumed it would go closer towards the actual body, um, but yeah, the the diagram didn't didn't tell me, and it would have been nice just to have a little bit in there saying. Okay, that's where they go, and they go around this way with the canisters facing whichever way they, they, they're supposed to face. Not the end of the world, but again, minor oversights. And that seems to be the thing with all of the instructions on these um, minor oversights. It just made it take a little bit longer to assemble than I would have wanted. 
but it's not the end of the world. I don't want to make it sound like these... I didn't have fun putting these together, but I don't want to make it sound like it was like the hardest thing in the world, because it wasn't. It's still, they're still relatively straightforward, and the, the pieces are beautifully engineered, and they fit really well. There's very little cleanup on them. Um, especially when you're dealing with inorganic shapes and things like that. You can get away with a few seams and things. So, uh, and, and the final products are really, really nice. Again, I'm not worried about WYSIWYG in terms of what weapons I've given them. I just gave them stuff I thought looked cool. Um, I just thought it'd be funny to load this one up with all of the big bombs, just, just because. And, uh, and yeah, when I, when I play the game, I'm not going to worry about what the miniatures actually have on them. I will worry about what cards I have associated with the unit card. But that's it. Overall, very, very good miniatures. I cannot stress that enough that I am really, really impressed with the quality of the miniatures, the quality of the um, engineering of the pieces, the way they're cut and go together. It's seamless and sometimes things interleave each other. So you'll push one piece into another piece and it will actually fill a hole in the other piece to create a complete assembly um like like the uh the cockpit will come up through the uh the top of the the uh, chassis section and complete the top it's really well done um i wish the instructions were a little bit clearer and spent a little bit more time showing how variant options attach but it's not the end of the world overall i'm very happy with them um, the size of them as well was very surprising to me and I can kind of understand a little bit more now why the two Marauder bombers will cost as much as six Dacker jets because, um, get out of the way you guys, because here, here's a Dacker jet and, and here's a Marauder bomber. So yeah, I, I, I get it now. It, it, when you're looking at images and even looking at frames before you've assembled stuff, it's hard to tell exactly how big things are going to be in relation to each other um, but I'm starting to see that I, I thought the the sets of two craft were a bit overpriced compared to other things but maybe they're not um, but yeah that's it that's all I've got to say for now really um, I hope people have found this look interesting um, it's just my personal thoughts and opinions um, I'm happy to hear yours in the comments Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.